Hi, and welcome to the Prumihimo channel where I am going to show you how to make a beautiful braid using the square plate. Now the square plate is a really useful tool. You can do a whole host of different braids with it. Uh, and they tend, by and large, to share the same construction. And that is you have a series of chord moves from the top to the bottom and bottom and top. And those tend to uh, dictate the surface pattern of the braid. So it might be of chevron, or it might be diagonal, or it might be straight up and down. And then you have a series of moves from side to side. And that might be one, two, three, or four chord moves from side to side uh, in each sequence, full sequence of moves. And that uh, dictates the actual uh, thickness of the braid. So the braid I'm going to show today is a 10 or it can be a 12 chord braid. I'm going to show it first of all as a 10 chord braid. And it is, um, the chords in this one just move straight up and down. They don't move across the top or bottom. So this has a straight up and down stripe to it. And it has two chords crossing through it in each full sequence of moves. So that makes it a sort of medium thickness braid. It's a really versatile braid. You can get some beautiful designs by playing around with different colours. And um, the tension is relatively easy to get right. Now, I say relatively because with all flat braids, tension is an issue. And if you get it wrong, you will find that the sides of your braid are not even. So a little bit of practice is required with all flat braids. So you can make a selection of um, different styles just by changing the positioning of the colours. Uh, so you can have um, a, a stripes down the middle, so I've got the bright pink stripe down the middle of a black braid. Then I've got more of a shaded look with the braid that has um, uh, going from yellow to green. Then I've got more of a banded look in this blue and grey one. Uh, and the one next door to it has a sort of alternating banding effect. Now, the next two braids are 12 chord braids, and bearing in mind what I've said about tension, I don't recommend trying these until you've really got your tension right on the 10 chord braid. And that's the way to get, to get the success, really get the practice in, and you will get there. Now, um, for my examples, I'm going to use a satin cord, or you may come across it called rat tail. Uh, and this is because it's got a nice slippery surface, and the definition of this, of braids made with this, is quite clear. So you can see where you've made a mistake. And in the learning process, that's terribly important that your mistakes aren't hidden. The quantities you need are similar to Kumihimo on the round disc. So I recommend for your first one to have three times the length you want to finish with for each chord, for each of the main chords. Uh, and then for the chords that cross over, you're going to need to have double that. You will find these quantities are quite generous. So when you've done your braid, take a note of what worked for you and then you can adjust it next time. So I've just got practice quantities here. If you want a bracelet, uh, you're probably talking about um, 8 times 60 centimetres and 2 times 1.2 metres. And you can have any colours you want. Uh, for this one, I'm going to do the one with the stripe in the middle. So my longer chords are going to be um, the main colour. And then I need an another um, four shorter chords, so 60 centimetres of that same colour, and then 60 centimetres of four chords of my contrast colour. And all these details can be found on my website as well, if you'd like to see them written down. So let's get started. So this is the setup. The braid I'm going to do here has the black stripe down the middle and the orange on the sides. First of all, chord lengths. The chords that are going to be at the top and bottom need to be half as long as these chords at the side. So to give you an example, if I wanted a bracelet, I would make these chords at the top and bottom 60 centimetres and I'd make the chords going across, those two chords, I'd make those 1.2 metres. 
hold the knot from underneath and slot the cords into the slots on top and bottom, making sure you've got those longer ones on either side. And remembering that some discs are numbered differently to this one. On this one, I've got them on um, uppercase E on one side, lowercase E on the other side. And I've got them in slots four, five, six, and seven, and 14, 15, 16, and 17 on the bottom. So if you want to wait, um, clip that onto the bottom underneath. I would normally use a weight for this. Because I've got a table underneath, I'm going to just hold the knot from underneath. So your first move is going to start from the top left, just like reading a book, that's where you start. And you're just going to bring that cord down to the empty cord there. So that was actually 4 to 13. Then I just move across to the next cord, which is the number 14 on this disc. I lift it up and bring it up to number 4. Now I move across to the next cord on the top, which is in number 5. It's a black one this time. And I bring that down to 14. Then I move across. Again, I'm always working in the direction of I would read. I bring it up to number 5. I move across take the cord from number 6, bring it down to 15, 16, up to 6, 7, down to 16, and 17, up to 7. Now I'm going to do my crossover moves. I move the cord on my right, which is in slot lowercase e, and I bring it across to below the other cord, so that takes it to uppercase F. And now I'm going to take that cord and bring it across the board to lowercase e. So now the configuration of the cords is slightly skewed. They're pointing in that direction and these cords are not in a straight line. I've now completed half of the sequence. The next part of the sequence, I work backwards across the board. So I start at the top on the right with number 7, and that goes down to 17. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before, but working from right to left. So picking up the next chord each time, bringing it up, then moving along to the next chord, down, next chord, up, next chord, down, next chord up, next chord down, and next chord up. And now I'm going to do my crossover moves. So this time I'm going to take my chord here from lowercase e and bring it straight across to uppercase e. And I'm going to bring the chord in uppercase f across to e. So that completes the sequence. Now I'm back where I was, the same configuration of chords. It's even and the line is across. So that basically is how you proceed. But the most important thing is to think about tension. When you first start, you're going to be going from a round knot. So your first few moves will not look particularly um, straight. They will just be, um, the chords will just be lining up so that you end up with a flat braid. Once you've done a few rounds, then you need to really concentrate on your tension. So in this round, what I'm going to show you what I mean by that. You need your moves to be as even as possible. The top to bottom moves are not too crucial. It's these side to side ones that are crucial. So let's go through the moves again. Again, I'm at the beginning of the sequence, so I'm starting on the left-hand side at the top, and I'm just going to work my way across in the same way. Top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top, top to bottom, bottom to top. Now, with this move, I'm going to make sure that when I move my cord from the right across to the left, I just bring it across smoothly without too much pulling. 
Now it's this next move which will gather up the chords and this one is very important that each time you perform this move you perform it in a, in a similar way so you pull on those chords to the same degree. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull it across and I'm actually going to tighten those chords a bit. And I'm going to try and remember how much I tightened them and I'm going to try to do that every time. So now I'm going to do the second part of the sequence which is starting from the top right. So I work through my chords and once you start to build up a little bit of rhythm you'll find that you will automatically do these in a nice even fashion. So I've done my top to bottom moves, now I've got to do that move across where I go above the other chord. And again, the first chord from right across to left, I'm just going to bring it across without too much pulling. And it's the second move, this one from left to right, I'm just getting a better grip on the knot there, I'm going to just tighten up. And with this braid you want to make sure that the point of braiding stays more or less in the middle. It will, you will find it will migrate slightly to the left. Uh, you want it to keep pretty much in the middle of the top and bottom, whereas some other braids you may wish your braid to stay right up at the top. This one is best kept in the middle. So that basically is the sequence and it's a matter of practicing. So my recommendation is that you get some reasonably length chords and just have fun with it. Once you've mastered this 10 chord braid, then you can add an extra, extra few chords uh, and you can have um, another, in fact it's another um, chord here, here, here and here. So that will bring you to, the, to a 14 chord braid. Well, thank you so much for watching that. I hope you found that easy to follow. All that needs to be said is how do you finish these chords off? Uh, because they're not round, they can be a little trickier to um, finish off with, with standard fixtures and um, findings. Uh, you can find some oval end caps and oval glue-in end caps or wire-in ones, uh, so have a look for those. Um, but what you can do is just roll the braid slightly, so you can roll the braid at the end of the braid so that it becomes more round and then you'll be able to use any round findings. And you can use the glue-in method and I have a video for that. You can use the wire-in method and I have a video for that. You can also use fold-over ribbon ends and I've got a video coming out soon showing you exactly how to do that. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to say that you've liked it. Don't forget to subscribe because then you'll be notified of other videos that I have. I'm very grateful for your attention and I've got lots of other things to show you. So until the next time, bye.